Let's talk about one Warhammer 40k charge screening exploit. It currently can be quite a powerful tool in defending ruins, but I suspect no one would be particularly sorry if Games Workshop found a way to make it go away for good. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought it would be interesting to take a quick video to talk through the weirdness of ruin walls and trying to block enemy bases from getting to the wrong side of them. What I'd see as a bit of a rules exploit really, rather than something that Games Workshop's intended, and the different ways that people have tried to either ignore it, play around it, or rule against it. The issues had a bit more discussion recently, and it was suggested to me as a video topic on Discord, particularly in the light of recent event rulings like the WTC, who've made an interesting document to try and destroy this, which is perhaps a harder problem to solve than it might look. I've talked about this ruin walls trick on the channel multiple times in the past, it's been a bit of a rules weirdness for the last couple of editions of Warhammer 40k, and some people feel like it's an issue for the game that Games Workshop could do with fixing, some people aren't really that bothered, or could almost be seen as units taking up good defensive positions in ruins. The way the idea goes is that say if the Space Marine Scouts don't want to be charged by this Chaos Terminator unit, they could take up positions in this ruin here, represented by the grey line, and set up their miniatures so they're just a tiny tiny bit more than one inches away from the walls, so if the Terminators wanted to charge them, they wouldn't be able to fight the scout unit if they had their model on the other side of the ruined wall to them. However, despite having really quite a short distance between the nearest Terminator to the nearest scout, they would still need a really quite long charge distance to complete the charge, as because their scouts are so close to the ruined wall, though outside of one inches, there's literally no physical space where you could set up the base for a terminator the other side of that ruin wall, so they have to go around or to the end of it. Basically you'd have to do something like the terminator on the bottom right of those three here, moving to contact the scout at the bottom end of the ruin, potentially a massively longer charge than they otherwise would have had to do. Just literally because the scouts are so close to the ruin they prevent the models crossing it, but also not so close that you can fight across it. It's not super easy to achieve against every opponent, Things with smaller 25mm bases can be kind of hard to screen in that kind of way, though it isn't that hard to do against things with really big bases like the Terminators on their big 40mm ones. In some cases, say if the scouts were a lot longer away from the Terminators, you might have a unit that you could declare a charge on, but just literally because of the way that they've set up next to the ruins, you can't actually physically complete the charge even if you roll a 12. And it's just a bit odd that you could just be staring straight down against a unit that you want to charge, but you can't really get to them. That's perhaps just a slightly more subtle version of the same tactic, you could also make a charge kind of painful if the opponent did complete it. Say for example these intercessors are trying to do the same thing against this unit of orc boys trying to charge them. The intercessors could perhaps just leave enough a gap for literally one model to get the other side of the wall to fight the unit, but no others. And that could lead to a weird sort of trap scenario. Where if the orc player does do the charge, then they could just move that one model into base and then fight with that one, but literally none of the models could actually make it into combat or get into engagement range, and they wouldn't be able to fight as they're not within base contact of another model that's in base contact as they'd be the other side of the wall. You could have a situation where a massive mob of orcs tries to charge the squad, one orc gets through and does some chip damage, and then all the intercessors can immediately just turn around and pile attacks back into that same unit, potentially killing a bunch outside of the walls. Whichever way that it's been gone for, I feel like this is just a bit weird for anyone who's newly encountering this. It does kind of make sense a bit against things that can't cross the ruined walls, like knights, vehicles and monsters that aren't really relevant in these examples. If you can stay just a bit within the interior of the ruin, it does kind of make sense that the unit would be hard to charge, as they would have to go around the walls like they would normally. I feel like it makes far less intuitive sense though against things like beasts and infantry which are usually able to ghost through ruin walls in the movement and charge phases. It just gives players the idea that you should be able to charge those sort of units as the ruin shouldn't be an obstruction to them. It is a bit of a weird mental image, say if you had a bunch of Orc Gretchen manning a ruin and then you couldn't charge them with your Chaos Terminators just due to rules weirdness with base sizes. It also just feels very arbitrary that if the models were a little bit closer to the wall, you could fight them through the wall, or if they were a bit further away, then there'd be no problem and you could get your models there. It's just this halfway in between giving you a bit of an overpowered board position, which whenever I've seen it discussed, it generally just doesn't really feel like it was an intended situation by GW. Sometimes in the past they have had terrain rules that make it harder to charge, say imposing a minus two penalty, or giving your opponent an improvement to saves or things like that, but this feels very different and much more due to model movement tricks. 
as opposed to something that's supposed to give some sort of flavour to how ruins felt. However, though, as it stands at the moment, it certainly is the way that the core rule works. Over the past few editions, it's certainly something that is fairly familiar to tournament players. You might often be playing against someone and they're just declaring intent to stay. I'm just saying just a little bit greater than one inch away from ruins to try and ward off charges and make sure my men are safe. It's a bit of a no-brainer, as if this is legal, there wouldn't be any real reason not to do so. Even in tournaments, though, why it might make sense on a per-player individual basis, there have been events that have ruled against this in one way or another, as we'll get on to with the WTC thing in just a bit. I feel like it's one of the moves in more casual games where you might get a bit of a frosty reception if you pulled it out against a newer player. Perhaps for two experienced players who know the rules as written and are kind of happy to play with all the gamey tricks on the table, it's not really a problem. But I feel like this is the sort of thing that in a casual game could definitely be a bit of a gotcha moment or cause some eye rolls, seeming more like a distraction than a part of the game they really want to be engaging with. It can be potentially very problematic on certain terrain sets as well, Say, for example, if you had a fully enclosed, more intact ruin with a four-corner building with a unit inside it, it does mean that you could potentially create situations where that unit can't be charged from any angle whatsoever. The unit inside protected from all the horrors of the galaxy outside of it, no matter how mighty, by their magic box. That is one of the reasons why tournament terrain often tends to have a lot of L-shaped ruins or ruins with one more missing. Even if it might still cause some problems, like with the scouts at the top and making charges a bunch longer. At least if you do have enough movement, you can actually get round the back of things, and you don't have units that are just 100% impossible to interact with in the charge and fight phase. Back in 9th edition, Games Workshop did have a go at trying to patch this mid-edition. Along with one of the balanced data slates, I believe, they decided to throw in a rule trying to make this go away. Stating with a fairly simple rule that if you're fighting in or over or through a ruins terrain piece, then you can increase engagement range to 2 inches. That one meaning that there wouldn't be enough space for a unit to both block out enemy bases for the most part, and also not be at risk of being charged from within the ruin. This one often seems to be the most commonly proposed fix to try and treat all ruins walls as barricades, but it did seem that that caused all kinds of problems in 9th edition, and I would have said that it probably hurt more than it helped. It made units in ruins extra easy to charge, which kind of felt inappropriate as well, given that they're taking up a fortified position, and that might be particularly relevant for charges out of deep strike, which could come in at 8 inches rather than 9 if they could tow into a bit of ruins terrain, which made all of those units massively more powerful. It was also strange that a unit inside a ruin could take up quite so much of the board in terms of screening, that extra 2 inches bubble around them for blocking movement was kind of huge for chaff infantry. And on top of that, it caused a whole bunch of gamey pile and consolidate sort of problems. As with the diagram here, you could have a Space Marine Captain charge and be within engagement range of those Chaos Terminators, then consolidate an extra two inches out of the ruin and stop the rule from being in effect anymore, and then suddenly be out of combat and the Chaos Terminators unable to strike back. Admittedly, that one's going to be far less of a problem in 10th edition where the charge and pile and consolidate rules are so much tighter. But it was kind of surprising just how much changing engagement range for certain units on the board could actually cause issues. As a result, I think it was in the next balanced data slate that they chose to just revert that change, maybe deciding that for the extra confusion, particularly as it wasn't actually baked into the core rules, it probably wasn't worth it, and they just quietly got rid of that change in the next update, meaning that everything reverted back to how it was before, and he could still do those gamey screening shenanigans. Perhaps the impetus for making this video was a suggestion to talk about the WTC fix for the whole screening in ruins thing. I'm sure the WTC will be a fairly familiar acronym to a bunch of people out there playing competitive 40k, though if you hadn't heard of them they're basically a great big organisation that holds the most prestigious Warhammer Teams event in the world, the World Team Championship. Independent from Games Workshop and trying to make Warhammer 40k being able to be played as competitively as possible at the highest level. As a result, they often have to take FAQs and errata a little bit more seriously than Games Workshop themselves do to try and absolutely iron out any rules disputes or issues before the main events come up. As a result, their rules can sometimes play slightly differently to Games Workshop's core offerings due to changes they've made in one way or another, often just being FAQs or errata, but sometimes like this trying to fix things that just don't seem intended by Games Workshop and they haven't yet done anything. The rulings do hold some sway as well, seeing as they're often used as a template for plenty of other events around the world. What I thought was kind of interesting was they issued a 12-page rules document for this one scenario. 
Admittedly, though, in reality, it's almost all of it explaining context and with pictures with examples. It's not really 12 pages actually full of rules about the one thing. But I still found it pretty funny that there might be a need for a 12-page rules document to iron out one issue of players trying to place their models in a gamey way, particularly given that the entire Warhammer 40k movement page section is a bit less than that. It seems that in Extreme Brief, the WT solution is to try and treat ruin walls like barricades, which are in the core Games Workshop rules, but only under some very specific preset conditions. It only works for and against infantry and beasts charging, and then the player has to choose to use the rules by placing little tokens on the models that are doing so, allowing them to fight within 2 inch engagement range over the wall itself but only if they have no other choice from the normal charge phase rules of getting within regular engagement range. They have to move as close as possible to the actual terrain piece walls if they can, and then the models that have used that basically get to get hit back in the same sort of fashion by the unit that they've charged. There's then a lot of fine details for how and when those tokens are removed regarding pylons and consolidates and things like that. I'm not going to get too bogged down in here. I'll link the document if you'd like to have a read of it yourself. But I feel like it's basically boiling it down to not allowing people to do gamey things with pylons and consolidates and abuse when they take off the tokens and the tokens themselves go if they do wind up in regular engagement range as well. Overall it's kind of interesting, it does look like it's a system that works really quite well to actually iron out the majority of those problems. They say their intent is that basically these rules won't actually be used whatsoever if people don't try and use the ruin walls in that kind of way. It might actually kind of give your opponent a small advantage if you do. And it limits using barricade rules to only if there's really no other solution to get your models into melee. I would help out with both of the scenarios at the start of the video. You'd be able to use the Terminators just to directly charge in the first example. And you'd be able to use the rest of the Orc Boys to use the barricade style fighting rules to attack the Intercessors in the second one. So they'd be able to back up their lone body. The idea of having to mark all the relevant models with a token does sound pretty painful to me though, I must admit. Though I guess if trying to play with it a bit more casually, you could probably just clearly show your opponent which of the models will be trying to make use of that rule. You might not necessarily need to mark them, particularly if the game state is only going to be temporary, if you're just going to wipe out the unit that you're charged anyway, for example. Overall seems useful enough. I guess the idea is though that you wouldn't have to use this at all, and it's more of a rule just to discourage people trying to game ruins like that. Maybe the existence of it is more to just save time and allow combats to happen, with people knowing that there's not going to be any point in trying to screen out the one inches behind ruins thing. I'd be interested to hear your guys' takes though, as to whether or not Games Workshop should try and do some sort of fix for the ruin screening thing. While that WTC rule will apply to certain tournaments and things, it won't be very relevant for most people playing 40k casually all around the place. If CW really doesn't want it in the game, it's probably up to them to actually try and fix it and patch it out, as they have done with a bunch of FAQs and erratas recently. Admittedly, I feel like it's maybe not that much of an issue at a more casual level, where people might not be trying to eke out every advantage with deploying their models to be unchargeable behind ruins, but I feel like it's still a bit of a weakness of the game system if it's left to players to self-regulate with any one rule. There's quite enough of that that you have to do in Warhammer 40k to start with, really. Other solutions that have often been talked about might be to invoke some sort of wobbly model syndrome type rule. Just say that you could count the model as being halfway through the ruin wall and remember where it is. Might not be the worst thing ever, but also could be pretty annoying if you're trying to do that with a big complicated combat. And then you go into the next turn and the model positions might really quite matter for lines of sight and things. It might well still iron out a bunch of issues. I would say that it's not really the actual purpose of the wobbly model syndrome rule. It's not really to try and let you take up new positions that you wouldn't be able to anyway. It's more just to stop your models getting broken when there's a chance of them falling over. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts though. Do you think that this is an issue that Games Workshop could do with fixing? Or is it a bit of tournament nonsense that's best left to bodies like the WTC to fix for people in events? And let individual players decide whether or not they're happy playing with and against this between themselves. Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, 
and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.